Good afternoon everyone and today we're going to be talking about using fog machines in a small studio space and no I'm not talking the human kind we're talking these so let's have a look at them we will briefly talk about a snow machine as well okay you can see before me I've got three fog machines they're all 400 watt fog machines now the difference in the wattage the higher the wattage, the more powerful the machine is, obviously. The greater the cloud it can put out, the further it can shoot. For a small studio space, the 400 watts work fine. Now, this one here and this one here are pretty much identical. One's just a little newer version than the other one. Uh, the only difference between them, basically, is one has an on-off switch, the other one doesn't. So, as soon as you plug it in, it starts heating up right away. Uh, this one's a little higher end. It's called the Hurricane 700. It's also a 400 watt though, but it produces a thicker cloud. This one tends to be a little more misty, but I love these as well. The one bonus for this one is look at the length of the remote for it. It's great if you're having to shoot by yourself. The other nice thing is this is magnetic, so you can attach it onto anything magnet. Sometimes I'll put a metal plate on the side of my belt and I can just clip it right to myself, which makes it really handy for when you're shooting. We will look at the different juices that go within the machines because even though I say these ones create mist, if you use a higher density fog, you can get more of a cloud. They're quite small machines. You can pick them up anywhere. Uh, it's best basically to pick them up after Halloween when everybody discounts and clears this stuff off. Uh, when I talked about the handle on the one, look at the length on this one. It's really short. That's the only downside to the smaller unit. So if it's near you, fine, or if you have an assistant, then it's not an issue. But when you compare the cord length thing, I, I really like this one. Uh, so let's have a look at some fog juice. You have your low end, kind of a mid-level fog juice. And then you have your higher end. Now, in a small studio space, this one works great. It produces pretty good fog and it evaporates fast, meaning you can just fan it with a piece of paper, cardboard, whatever you have, and it'll dissipate very rapidly. It doesn't make the thickest cloud, but you get some very good effects and I'll link in uh, a couple of video clips using this fog so you can have a look to, to see how it looks in action and how it looks in a photo. Okay, this is your thicker, more dense fog. Uh, it just came from a Halloween store as well. Uh, like I say, pick this stuff up after Halloween, the stuff's dirt cheap. This one dissipates quite rapidly as well. Not quite as fast as this one, but close. So I always make sure I'm stocked up on these. This one, on the other hand, is a high density. This is made by Chevet, the same company that produced this fog machine. It's a high density fog. Now, the first time I used it in my studio, it took a couple of days to get the fog out of here. And that's with having a fan in the window pulling the air out. This stuff doesn't go away. I had fanned it, it just simply moved to a different room. So I don't use this indoors, but when I'm doing outdoor shoots, this is the go-to stuff. It produces great, big, thick, beautiful fog. Uh, it's almost cloud-like. It is fantastic. And it, all these juices work in all these machines. It doesn't matter. Uh, so these are the juices that I have. I imagine there's more on the market. I have heard that you can even get like a scent that you can add. So it'll smell like tutti frutti or whatever you want. Uh, I don't bother adding any additives into it. 
uh, as I say, I just do the burst of the fog. And then once I've got those pictures, I clear that fog out and then re reset again. So these are your juices. Just remember, if you're getting the high def and you're shooting in a small studio or even a medium or large, this stuff's not going to go away. I find it's best really only outdoors. But that's my opinion. Now, I'm not being sponsored by any of these companies whatsoever. These are just uh, pieces of equipment and uh, the supplies that I picked up on my own. And I'm just letting you know kind of how to use them in a small studio space. So let me get rid of these things here. Now, the one thing to note with all the fog machines is they heat the solution. That's how it creates that vapor and blows that fog out. So if you're in a cooler environment, what does heat do? It rises. So your fog is going to rise quite quickly. So you have to be aware of that. Just get playing around with the fog and you'll see how it starts acting within your space. I've done quite a few shoots using fog within this studio uh, and you can see kind of how it moves around and, and, and you just learn and make it work from there. Now I have done some shoots where I've had them all laying on the ground and I needed low lying fog. There's lots of stuff on the internet about how to make fog chillers and everything else. Here's my simple version. Nothing like a good old kitty litter bucket. Works fantastic. You just basically fill this full of ice and the fog runs through it, chills it, and makes it hug the floor. So you see, I didn't do anything fancy by running hoses around that the fog goes through. I just, an input and output. It's that simple. So I just basically drill the hole on one side and the fog machine will sit near it. Now, it's important that you leave a gap. Don't jam it up. It won't work very well at all. The fog machine needs to breathe a bit. So just put it close and it'll blow into it. Then on this side, I've got two outputs. So I can get a, get a bit more of a blanket spread. Now this stuff, because it's cool, will hug the floor beautifully. If I need to really pump out a lot of fog fast, then I use these to input and put two fog machines blowing into it with the one output. Now, another trick you can do is with this sitting here is simply lay a piece of cardboard down with a little support under the front so it, it takes the fog and forces it down more and you get a little wider spread of the fog versus having it come out this way. So again, it depends on your, your use, your need, but this works great. Simply a kid, kitty litter box, and I just siliconed around it and made an input and output. Fill it full of ice, away you go. Works fantastic. And here's one of the pictures that I did using that. So that's basically it for the fog machines. Now, the one thing you, you really need to know when using the fog machines is they get hot. So make sure that they're on a stable surface, that they're not overly tipping so you're not spilling leaking liquid anywhere, and that no one's going to touch them because they will get burned. These things get hot. The fog itself within photography, as you can see behind me, black background. The darker the background, the more the fog will show the lighter, obviously, the less it shows. The other thing to help fog show up is by having lights behind it. So if you've got lights shining through the fog, it really makes that fog pop and stand out. Another bonus to having lights in behind is you can add colored gel to your lights. So you could put a couple of red gels on it and make that fog have a nice red glow to it. You can put red on one side, green on the other, blue, yellow, whatever you want, and you can color the fog within the photo studio versus trying to do it in Photoshop later by adding color into the fog. You can do it, but it's a little more finicky. Why not get it right in the camera if you can? So just remember, these things get hot. The fog coming out of this is quite warm. You can chill it with a homemade chiller and you need backlight on the fog to really make that fog stand out for you.
So that's really all I've got for this. Uh, I don't have any real issues within the small studio space in using it, as I showed you in a, in a couple of those clips. It works out great. Uh, I usually put a fan in the window and I can just exhaust in between. But honestly, the real cheap stuff, I think I paid like five bucks for this for a gallon. It dissipates so quickly. It works great, it hangs around for your chute and then just goes, just fan it, it's gone. Uh, so that's about it. If you have any questions or comments or whatever about using fog machines, uh, or if you have any images you've done with it, I'd love to see it. Just put them in the uh, comment section down below and I'd love to check that out. And I'd love to see any of your uh, comments or suggestions using the fog machines. Now, I will talk about this one and it is not a fog machine. This is a snow machine. This is the ADJ Fury fog machine. Uh, I've used it in a few photo shoots. It works fantastic. It comes with a wired controller and on here you can adjust uh, the amount of snow coming out and you can turn it on and off and you get your ready to use and when it needs to charge for a sec. On the back of the machine you have a minimum and maximum. So the minimum and maximum basically is just a fan. A lower speed fan, higher speed fan. So if you're running a higher speed fan and small particles, you get more of a snowstorming effect. And on here, you can increase the amount of snow that's coming out. So by playing between the fan speed and the snowflake size, if you will, uh, you can get a very light snowfall to an absolute blizzard uh, and I'll show you a couple of video clips of uh, me using this in studio and a couple of images that I created with it. Now, the one thing, if you're using this indoors, and they say it's safe to use indoors, and I've used it indoors without much of an issue. The one thing I have noticed, though, in a small studio space, if you're running this, you're starting to cough. There's something within the juice of this, and it comes in gallon containers, that is an irritant. I don't know what. Uh, so whenever I use this, I put a fan exhausting the room. And as soon as you do that, your problem solved. So I tend to try and mainly use it outdoors, but I will and have used it indoors. The other thing with uh, this machine, they recommend that you run it once a month, whether you're going to do a photo shoot or not, to run some liquid through it to keep the pump and the lines clear. Uh, even though I did that, the pump got clogged. I've had to take this apart multiple, multiple times and clean the pump. Unfortunately, now the pump is dead. I can't get it to work. I've tried everything. So I'm going to have to order a new pump for this unit. Uh, I'm not even sure. I think they're 20 or 30 bucks. They're not overly expensive, but it's just the fact that these are a higher maintenance than these. Uh, I think this was my original one. I've never cleaned it. I always just leave the fog juice in it, never done anything, turned on and let it warm up. Works beautiful. You can get cleaning solutions for the fog machines. Uh, it is highly recommended to run it through the lines to keep the pumps and everything clear. Uh, but that's about it for these. This one, more maintenance. You've got to keep that line and the pump clear or the solution will almost crystallize within the line and within the pump. And once that happens, you're going to have to take it apart, try and clean it, or it's just going to clog and it'll ruin the pump, which is kind of the scenario that happened here. So... I'm now in at, uh, looking at buying a new pump. Okay, like I said, if you have any questions or comments, please leave it in the comment section down below. Uh, so, until the next time.